Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the ball. Everyone and welcome along to our latest episode of the RTGA podcast. Round three of the Alliance Football League is upon us, and Kieran Whelan is with myself and Rory to look ahead to the weekend. How are you getting on, Kieran? Well, Jackie, yeah, you know, Valentine's night, and we're recording this. I don't know what it says about the three of us, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing we love this week, we love, is football. <laughs> football. Yeah, yeah it. well, it's, like, it's like I told I told my wife there, she said, what are we doing for Valentine's? So I said, well, I'm watching the Sigerson Cup fight. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> and I've got football training after this. So, yeah, I don't think it's uh, it's not a good night for any of us. Um, well, look, let's get stuck into the football then this weekend, because a couple of big ties to look forward to. In Division 1, you've got Kerry Mayo, Dublin Ross Common, Derry Monaghan and Tyrone Galway. Let's start with that big one on the RTE cameras on Saturday night, Kieran, because Kerry Mayo, you don't even need to sell this game. I just think for anybody who's been watching it and watching these two teams in particular this year, I think they're just looking forward to what should be a great game of football. Yeah, it should be, Jackie. And every time they meet, in fairness, they don't yeah. disappoint. And, uh, you know, you look back to last year and this time last year, Kerry went up as, you know, would have as all Ireland champions back off a holiday, landed into Castle Bar. I think it was that game was in Castle Bar, I think, last year. Correct. Mm-hmm. And uh they got their wings clipped fairly Good aggressively. Time. They absolutely destroyed them. I remember watching watching that game on TV and I was down in Killarney, uh similar in the group game and and you know Mayo done done a job on Kerry. And so so Mayo seemed to like playing Kerry, you know, under Kevin McStay it seems to and I don't know whether it's the way Kerry set up. It may suit, may suit Mayo's game plan. So yeah, it should be a good one. Um, like I'd say Mayo coming away from the last night against Dublin were were really happy to get out with two points and play probably at 50, 60 percent of their mm-hmm. ability, in my view. Uh compared to but the first half the previous week against Galway, when I thought they were excellent and looked really sharp, I thought they were pretty poor against Dublin at times. And you know, particularly in the 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 first quarter and the third quarter, uh, and they got out with a win, and you can't beat that, I think, in league football, to, like, to come away with plenty to work on, picking up the two points that are so valuable in the league, it puts them in a really nice position going down to Kerry, and it's kind of nearly a, a free shot, to a certain degree, and, you know, they'll probably learn from the, the Dublin game that, you know, will they get away, their kicking game didn't come off against Dublin at all, Dublin dropped someone into the pocket, you know, they they their running game when Paddy Durkin got going, he made a massive difference. So, you know, they'll you know, their kicking game might work against Kerry, because Kerry might leave the gaps, but they'll they'll certainly know how Kerry set up and 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 certainly last year in that league game they were able to find pockets in the in the full back line and get runners coming through on the shoulder and similar in the in the championship game to beat the press. So Mayo will like it. Kerry, you know, I think the league is kind of evolving this weekend where you're kind of saying, you know, you it's really beginning to show that, you know, you expect Derry are probably going to win and then one of Kerry or May are going to win. So you're going to have two teams on six points heading, you know, in good position, you know, and I think it's between the three of them. Uh, to be honest, I think that if, if I was to pick who was going to be in the final now, I think it'd be the two out of those three. Um, but Kerry for, for me, you know, Still, just looking at Kerry against Mana, and obviously they brought the Cliffords back and probably rushed the Cliffords back in that they weren't supposed to play. Um, Todd against Derry, they were well outplayed in the in in the first half, even though they were missing a lot of players. They had a purple patch in the second half, could have stolen with the goal chances. Cliffords came back last week, made a big influence. Uh, I still think there's question marks about them defensively, and and I don't mean just the start of the league. I mean, I mean in the context of even last year's All Ireland final, I think. You know, they won the All Ireland based on a solid defence and Tyg Morty's role and stuff like that. I just think they're missing an awful lot of tackles and they've easily got it. Um, and I think Mayo could expose that. Uh, I think the same, the same Kerry. thing. You you would have said the same thing about them though, Kieran. Last year, the year before, if Kerry are going to beat a team, it's because they're going to score more than them. That that's yeah, their kind they, of philosophy, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, and they probably back themselves. They have the forwards, and they're, 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 they they can they can strike that balance because they have quality up top up top, but. I just think they're, you know, they're there to be got at defensively, and and I think it's a, it's a, you know, I don't know. There's just a lack of steel, or there's a lack of physicality in them. Sometimes I think they're too nice, 
uh, as a defensive unit that they could be a little bit more aggression in them and when they do get contact down they could be a little bit more aggressive in the tackle Kerry you know, too nice Kerry too nice I've heard it all, I've heard it all we love. <laughs> no but I just think there could be a little bit more aggression in the tackle and just I just think they're there the way they're kind of set up in their first two league games I think will suit Mayo in terms of their running game and Mayo could really get at them and cause them problems uh, but having said that having said all that Jackie I think you know, this game, Mayo, Kerry will target this game because Jack O'Connor will think last year we were a soft touch championship and then really not put us on the back foot and probably not knocked a bit of momentum out of Kerry and he'll want to lay down, I think, a psychological marker. And that's why I think as uh, and and the need for Mayo and those two points may not be there. So you know, I'm just I'd lean with home advantage. I think Kerry mm. will do enough, particularly with the Clippers back. Yeah, I think those two things are a big factor, Rory. The need is probably greater for Kerry and there's probably not a better man in the country than Jack O'Connor to find that bit of a needle that Mayo gave them last year to use that as a bit of a, you know, incentive for his team to get going. A needle that they got twice uh, in mm. league in league and championship. And yeah, I think Milo's points around the way Mayo seemed to fancy the style that Kerry... Kerry will generally allow you to play football and they're the kinds of games that Mayo enjoy. I think Mayo's conundrums have usually come and the, the difficulty in figuring puzzles out have usually come against teams that kind of sit back and I think what Cork did to them was a classic example of that last year in the championship. I mean, after the the way they handed Kerry their backsides to them in the first round of the round robin last year, would you have said that Cork were going to take Mayo out on the final round a couple of weeks later, you certainly wouldn't. But I think there's been a huge shift in Mayo as well. I was looking on, um, it's two, year, two years since they've obviously met in Chile and they play each other a lot as well. They do meet very frequently in league and championship, so they know each other quite well. <clears throat> but something that I thought was really striking was um, two years ago, Mayo went down to Tralee, lost by a point on that occasion. Another terrible night, usually is in Tralee. But they're back six that night. Padraig O'Hora, Lee Keegan, Michael Plunkett, Stephen Cohen and Oisin Mullen. Now, Paddy Durkin was obviously in there as well. Now, he's very much set at this stage with McBride, Callan, and then Paddy Durkin. And, you know, he's got his back six. Like, they're, they're, that's the one consistency over the first two fixtures from Kevin McStay's point of view, in that he's picked the same defensive six in both games. So I think he kind of has settled on that. But what I found interesting is it's more or less a brand new back six in the space of two years. And we hear an awful lot about teams in transition and teams trying to, you know, oh, like they're. There's a reshaping of the defense. Dublin, for instance, are, you know, maybe going through a little bit of a an overhaul as well, given the age profile of some of their players. But Mayo have done it in the space of two years. They've more or less a brand new, and including the goalkeeper, because Henley was in goal that night as well. So it's a back seven. That's all pretty much brand new and look tailor-made and ready to go. I think that shouldn't be underestimated. I think their their biggest issues, which would be perennial issues for Mayo, is can they put enough on the board? But, you know, look, I think that it will get a very good indication. I think the exciting thing about this part of the league for me is that two week break generally is a time when teams start to ramp things up with a mind to championship. I don't know, Willow, would that be fair? But well, you... suppose, Roy, back in back in our day, it's, you know, you had two matches and then two weeks. So it meant the fat lads could get a bit fitter, really. That was probably the difference. <laughs> 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 They're all fairly fit now. So I don't think Maybe it doesn't make a huge point. I suppose <laughs> the point, the point that, that um, in a ham-fisted way I was trying to make was the Sigerson, as we know, will be finished as of to last night when this goes out, but tonight uh, uh, as we're recording. And you'll have a lot of players that'll be back in the fold for their counties right across the board. The Bridget's lads should be back into the mix. The Glen lads were already thrown back into the mix. So all those distractions now have all been dispensed with in terms of the inter-county scene. And I think from here on, it'll start to ramp up. And teams now really need to start Think from Kevin's point of view, though, could you imagine he came out of Tralee with two points, and in his first three matches, Kerry, Dublin, Galway, and he was sitting on six. That'd be fair going now. He'd be delighted. I'm yeah, fine. I think I think well, get back to one of your points you made there against about Mayo and how Kerry set up. Like one of the interesting things, Jackie was Dublin. Dublin were Dublin were quite defensive two weeks ago. 
and I think it was that was intentional. Uh, you know, they knew that it was a type of game that Mayo didn't really like to play. They wanted to slow them down in attack. They wanted to force them to into turnovers. You know, they knew that was a Mayo weakness, and like Dublin were very, very defensive and, and were happy to play on 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 the counter attack. You're not going to see that probably from Kerry. You doubt you'll see it from Kerry at the weekend. You know, as you say, they rely on their 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 lads up front, and I think what will be an interesting battle is you would probably anticipate Sam Callan will pick up David David Clifford this time, and uh, you know he done the job against Shane Watch in the first round. That would be an interesting battle to see how he matches up, you know, in, in that space because whether you like it or not, you know, you know Kerry they're still so reliable on the performance of. Of, of the two lads and, and Sean O'Shea up front you know they're, they're so has, has Callan got the tools do you think because he's no doubt about it he's a star in the making Kieran. has he got the tools to be able to yeah, tell well, listen, he's, he's, a, he's a lot on at the moment obviously he's, think he's playing Sigerson tonight as well do you mm. know what I mean uh, but he I, I think he has I think he has I think he's grown you know he, he, he's, he's grown into the game I think he's a big physical guy but he's he's mobile as well uh, I, I think whether he'd be as comfortable as if Clifford stays close to goal is going to be questionable because he's probably so far when we've seen him pick up that role, he's been he's followed men out the field, you know. So I think it will be a, a real good test to see where barometer to where he's at, you know. Yeah, looking forward to watching yeah, that battle. Me too. You guys are talking about teams that do need points, right? So when you're talking about the Dublin performance a couple of weeks ago, Kieran, and how defensive they were, Dublin should have won that game against Mayo. So instead, they find themselves in a position this weekend where they're playing Roscommon in a four-pointer. It's maybe, I don't know how much it changes the narrative for Desi Farrell, but he should have had those two points on the board already and been able to come at this one in a completely different way. Suddenly, this is kind of a must-win scenario for them because whoever loses this game is suddenly looking at the trap door and life becomes a whole lot different in the next couple of weeks in terms of the pressure they might be under because of that result a couple of weeks ago. Albeit, I thought Dublin performed actually quite well. And Kerry yeah. Derry and Kerry Derry next, Jackie. That's, True, that's yeah, exactly. Dublin's next two fixtures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, it, it definitely changes the dynamic of it, Jackie. And I think Dublin will reflect on the Mayo performance as if, yeah, it was it was certainly better for periods. And but again, it was you know it was Brian Fenton, Jack McCaffrey in that first half, you know that kind of dragged them into a lead and stuff like that. And but they'd be they'd be disappointed, obviously losing a game, two games in a row by a point. You know that's not. The Dublin style. Usually they say if Dublin are there knocking around five, six minutes to go, they just know how to grind out victories. So that that will irk them a small bit. And probably particularly that last 10 minutes where they had possession and they had chances and the execution of some of the shots and chances they had were, were pretty poor. And I think that's that would be definitely that last quarter they'd be focusing in saying, listen, we got to get better at closing out the game. I'm sure they'll work on a few strategies around ball retention and working scores and working a few set plays. That's something they have to improve on. It's probably a little bit unfortunate from Hus Commons' perspective that Dublin are really coming and needing the points, if you know what yeah. I mean, because yeah. Yeah, you, you get a sense that's going to get add another 10, 15% that they, it's kind of, there's a must need to get these points on the board. From Hus Commons' perspective, you know, aim for them. They, they, they you know, the one team that came up to Crow Park last year, you know, in the group system and drew with Dublin and put it up to them and put in a very, very strong performance. And we all remember that period, the possession period that game became famous for. But, you know, the start of the league, I thought, watching them against Tyrone, like, they lacked a bit of cutting edge up front. They were obviously missing uh, the Bridges lads. They missed them to Smith that day. Um, you know, the last day against Galway was such a, a horrid conditions, you know, a typical 9 all winter game of football you know they introduced a few Bridges lads back into it they would have been happy to get a point out of it I think from their perspective the positive is coming to Crow Park on a good surface and being able to play football and I think they'll that they will see an improvement in them as a result of that similar to what we got from Monaghan so I think there's you know while Dublin will step it up at home I also think there's much more in Roscommon uh, and I think they'll come with a much stronger performance but you got to feel that Dublin, Crow Park, listen, they're rarely beaten there. What happened against Monaghan, you know, was 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 a Monaghan, obviously their bogey team, but I do think that Dublin will be sharper, albeit Jackie, like they're still missing still missing so many in defence, you know, and the, you know, like we, we can speak about the clubs and factor where he brings, he'd be probably back later in the year. But you know, they're they're you know, John Small came on the last day, you know, they didn't have James McCarthy, they're missing Brian Howard, David Burn is gone, they're missing McFitz. 
you know, merchant didn't play. Listen, listen, literally the whole defence from last year. Um, so they're trying, still trying to introduce new players. I, I do certainly like the look of Clancy, a fullback. I've, I, I said it last year when I saw him playing the Dublin under twenties. I said this guy is, looks to be the real deal. I think he's very cool, calm, great reader of the ball. He's big, he has pace, and he's. He's 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 a very very good tackler, and I think we saw that the last night. I thought he'd a, he'd a, he'd a, he'd a very good debut in Mayo. I think Greg McInerney at wing back also, you know, he had that chance last minute to maybe snatch the game. That would have been brilliant for his confidence. But I thought he played well on the night, and they are probably two defenders that, in my eyes, from a Dublin perspective, that I see will be really pushing hard to get in the first fifteen. But you're hoping that a few of the others you know, newer players will also begin to shine during the league, you know, but I think Dublin will Dublin will just edge Saturday night, but we'll get a better performance from us coming. I think mm-hmm. what you mentioned there, Rory, is such a big factor, knowing that they've got Kerry coming to Dublin the following week, and then they're playing Derry, Up two there. of the last yeah. four yeah. from last year's championship. You know, Dublin will feel like they want to be really setting out their stall by the time they're playing against these teams. And, you know, I think Kieran is right. Ross Common might feel that had Dublin got a couple of points before now, this might have been a different game. They have to win really on Saturday night and they probably, they will. Look, I think they will. I think Ross Common, we mentioned just a few minutes ago again, uh, in terms of disruption uh, and you're leading into it, wouldn't necessarily have as deep a panel as some of the other top rank um, Division One counties. And with the Sigerson, I think Ben O'Carroll is playing tonight as well in the Sigerson Cup final. So you're going to be, you know, a, another player that will have has had a busy program of games under his belt. I think Brian Stack, Brian Stack played the last day or certainly came on. So he was, I think he was a sober, or you'd, yeah, you'd expect yeah. him to be integrated back in. Yeah. yeah, and they'll need him. I mean, he's nearly of all the Bridges players, for my money, possibly the most significant and most important player from a Ross Common perspective. But I just, just you look. They're going up to Croke Park. In fairness, they acquitted themselves absolutely brilliantly there last summer, and that's not to come in any way across as patronising. I mean, they gave Dublin plenty of it and they did very much deserved their draw. But just with like Dublin, I have to get two points on the board because there, there is a possibility you get the two points as you, as you just mentioned, Jackie. Like if you get beaten in your next two games, which is eminently possible and all of a sudden you've, you're zero from zero heading into the final two rounds, then it puts huge pressure on your well, next down. Yeah. yeah. The, the the only thing I'd say though, from a Dublin perspective, and one of the things that I think Desi Farrell should be applauded for, after they won their All Ireland last year, I thought he was definitely going to go because I felt, you know, the one All Ireland that they, that he had won, which was the COVID one, which is an odd that was an odd year. Trust me, I was at we know we were there. What wasn't that dist- when you think back, how strange were those games? But anyway, that may be a podcast for another day. But my God, that was a uh... Jackie, you would have been on duty by yeah. the way, for some of those as well. Yeah. It was it was so weird, wasn't it? Mad. Mad. Yeah. But so so that was the All Ireland. That was his first year. They completed six in a row, an odd year, and then obviously got beaten in the semi final in the next two years by Kerry and Mayo, and then he comes back and he wins a glorious one. I'm going, you know, age profile. He's done four or five years. He's given his life to Dublin GA. Now is a nice time to bow out. And, you know, he's going out on a high. I thought, and, and there's a big rebuild job. Will I mentioned about Greg McEnany and Theo Clancy, and they are the future, but they're probably going to need to start getting integrated a little faster now because you probably will see over the next couple of years, Michael Fitzsimons, Stephen Cluxton will eventually have to go. So there's a lot of players. James McCarthy's not getting any younger. Brian Fenton is the wrong side of 30. Kieran Kilkenny's around a long time. They've already lost Johnny Cooper. Like, the team is changing. So the, the job of overhauling them is an onerous one. And I think Desi Farrell deserves an awful lot of credit for staying on board because I think he agreed three years. Now we know what that means in the GA. But I think it was an honourable thing to do to actually take this on because it was because um, it's not easy. It's not easy to change to change a team that's enjoyed such a winning culture for so long. Hmm. Well, he's proven it. He's done it with the 21s as well, hasn't he? He knows what it's like to work with young fellas too. So definitely has a job on his hands this weekend anyway. But I mm. think you're both certain that they're going to win that game. Uh, what yeah, about the I other two so. games then? Derry, Monaghan, Tyrone, Galway. Monaghan, Kieran. we watched them the first week against Dublin and you thought, brilliant, this is great. Monaghan are here to play. They want to do this. Then they go out and they lose to Kerry by nine points in Clonus. And 
you talk about Jekyll and Hyde scenarios and whatever, but you're looking at this Monaghan and team thinking, how can you do that in two separate weeks in two completely different performances? It's just so hard to judge where they're at. Yeah, I think sometimes that's the psychology of the league. It's the fascinating thing about the league. You know, seven games and nine weeks, you get you get massive, you know, discrepancies uh, in the way the results. Yeah, because like yeah. there's a huge volatility there and performances up and down. And one week, you know, and we all, you know, we have this habit every year. We say, oh, we won't get sucked into the league at the start, but everyone does. Everyone does. <laughs> Just by one performance, everyone has the answers for the whole year. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So even though they like they turn Dublin over, you know, they're still introducing a lot of young lads. They've still lost a lot of experience. You know, they're still the Rory Began factor. Like I wasn't expecting them to be Kerry, if I'm being honest, because you know, you can get that kind of one really good performance, but I think Monaghan are still, you know, a step down from the top teams. I, I would have them probably in a similar category as Tyrone at the moment, if I'm being honest. So, you know, and, and also the high, Jackie, the high of the big victory in Crow Park, it, it can be extremely challenging for management to get that, you know, level of intensity and that work rate back into lads in, in that next. I think there's sometimes it can be a, a natural fall off. I think that's one of the one of the challenges that face a lot of management. So, you know, I think they face another difficult weekend, unfortunately. I think um Derry listen have 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 very much laid out that, you know, they certainly have ambitions to win this league. And when you look at them the last day against Tyrone, like I, I, I thought it was just men against boys. I really did. Well, while Tyrone had a lot of chances and missed a lot of wides, a lot of them were half shots and probably poor shot options. I thought Derry controlled the game from start to finish. And what was interesting about Derry's game was I thought, <clears throat> I think it was the first time we kind of saw maybe a facet of how Mickey Hart and Gavin Devlin approached loud. Um, in that it was, you know, even the Kerry game, that defensive instinct we've seen in the Derry players to drop off once they lose possession and drop deep. They didn't drop as deep as we had done in, 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 in previous games. And definitely there was a there was a an intent to go out and say, right, let's press out, press Tyrone out the field, press them high up the field, press them in the middle of the park, you know, put pressure on them. They've done that when they win the win, but they continue to do it to a lesser degree in the second half. And you know, it was evident with Loud that they had two kind of game plans last year. Even when they were there, they had a quite very defensive game plan where they would drop very, very deep and and try to, you know, slow down the opposition and play on the counterattack. And then a couple of times they played a higher line and they got hurt badly, Dublin being the case in point in the Leinster final and stuff like that, where they felt they could push out and, and they, they had to push out on better teams. So, I think Derry are just working through their their game plans and what how they'll approach games and like when you just when you look at the quality that they have in the field like they're near they're the only team that is near championship strength uh, that is at championship strength uh, so they're extremely well conditioned and I think you know they beat Man and twice in the championship last year the first the first day was 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 a massacre to say Man and done a lot better by 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 press. I think we'd see an element of that, but Derry to me are are in full control of their own destiny at the moment in in, in terms of where they're at, and I think they'll win with a bit to spare. I think on on that one. I think they look like they've they're a little ahead, even in spite of the Glen lads coming in late. Rory, just in the the physical condition that they are all in, Kieran is right. They they look like they're at a different level than a lot of the other teams that we've seen so far. Yeah, and they seem to have Monaghan's number as well at the minute. Rilo mentioned there about the two championship wins last year. Um, did did they draw the second one? I, I should have checked My, that. But the second one, the second one, remember. the second one was in a second group a stage. Draw, possibly, a group stage. Second one was a group stage. Got hammered in the first one. Like, yeah, and and, and we, we you mentioned Jackie about the sort of juxtaposition between Monaghan performances, and it was probably crystallised very much last year against Derry times two in that the first day out after having such a brilliant win. Last minute rocket of a goal, Ryan O'Toole knocked Tyrone out of the championship on their own patch and then just get absolutely pummeled. And they were pummeled by Derry in that Ulster semi final. So they did show a very good ability. And this is, I think, again, Vinnie Corey deserves a lot of credit. They learned. They learned from that defeat. They obviously changed their entire approach to when they re-met in the championship later on. 
and obviously put in a much better performance. And ultimately, it resulted in them making it to the last four and played a significant role on that on that journey for them. So they have the ability to adapt depending on the challenge. I think the problem for them is they're going to run into a bit of a haymaker this weekend with in a, against a team that is humming. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you're pretty definite on that one. The last game seems to me like the two teams who are on. You know, you're yeah. listening to Porrick Joyce, the way he's talking about his team. Eight mm. point hammering against Mayo. You look then last weekend, slightly better is how he described it. Against a Tyrone team who had 10 second half wides in that Derry game. And when 30 minutes, I think, without scoring, like I, I don't actually know which one of these teams should be more unhappy with the way that their league is going. Yeah, and the funny thing about it is, uh, Jackie, like if Tyrone were to get a home win, they'd be on four points. Do you know what yeah, I mean? They'd be, I they'd be in a reasonably good position, you know, albeit a few tough games to come down the track. Um, Tyrone, to me, looked like, you know, a team in transition, uh, very much in transition. If I'm, I think they're, you know, they're, I think they'd be very, very happy just to get the four or six points and and build and try and develop players over, over, over the next few. You know, they're obviously Petey Hart was missing the last day. Um, Dan McCurry didn't get going, you know, in a strange way, they've become, you know, I know Peter might have been with us this evening and it would have said it to him, they've, they've become very reliant on Derek Canavan very, very quickly, you know, as an individual marksman. And I don't think, you know, you need to have, be able to kind of share that burden a bit up front. Uh, I think Lionel Morgan's doing a brilliant job leadership wise at the back. I think he's he, he's 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 the glue keeping them together, even though they looked very open at times against Derry. So, I think they're very much in transition. I think they, but they still have a great chance of, as I said, get a winning at the weekend because they're at home. Like Galway, like a Galway becoming, you know, a, a bit of a puzzle, really. Um, you know, there's times when we're sitting back and you're thinking, yeah, they've they've great quality players. They're going to kick on, but when's that kick going to come? I know they're missing Comer. They missed um, Sean Kelly, Kelly uh, McDaid. Sean Kelly, which came watch the last day. He wasn't playing the last day. Obviously, Killy McDade is out for the league. So they are missing the spine of core players. Uh, but they were toothless up front against uh, Mayo. I think it was the 53rd minute before they got a point from play against Ross Common, even though the conditions are really poor. So they're not going up full of confidence. So uh, I think if Tyrone set up similar to way they went with the way they played Ross Common and they get their structure right at the back, they have enough pace, I think, in the forward line to maybe cause them trouble they just to me they just have more guys that are going to threaten the scoreboard at the moment unless Matthew Tierney or Rob Finnerty put in a, a master class up front so I think it's yeah it's it's a it's a it's concerning times we go even though it's early in the year and they're missing you have to give them a pass because they're missing loads of players but I think if Tyrone at home could nip it that would put them in a great position four points and 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 be still be in that kind of development stage not really hitting the heights that you would expect you know yeah, because they're in a development stage, but you would have thought Galway are not, Rory. No, you know, no, like they no. have what they have now. This is as good as it gets for Galway football. They've got a brilliant squad. Kieran is right. They are missing some in terms of injuries and whatnot. But this is this is what they have now to work with. He'd want to get, I think Porrick Joyce would like to feel that his team could show something this weekend that they can actually hang their hat on for this league campaign because he hasn't had an awful lot to motivate them with based on what he's seen so far. Uh, absolutely. I think... One of the big problems that somebody, you know, be a very amateur historian when it comes, when it comes around to all Ireland finals particularly is sometimes, or not sometimes, quite regularly, you see a team that gets to an all Ireland final and into a final that maybe they feel, oh, had different things happen on the day, they could have, should have, would have, and all of those types of things. And the team really falls away after that. And that happens a lot. You can go through history and you will find countless examples of it. Um, it's very and it is very, very difficult to keep coming back a la Mayo. A la the Cork team, by the way. Um oh, 06, oh, oh, 06. Well, the 06, oh, 07. Well, the 06, oh, 07, oh, 08, oh, 09, 10 era, which I don't think which I don't think they get a lot of credit for. Like they were in five semi-finals and two finals, you know? And 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 eventually got over the line so when you do lose a big final it can lead to 
I wouldn't necessarily say a breakup of a team, but certainly it damages the confidence that like, you know, look, will we ever really get there? And I think from that's going to be a key aspect that we will see from Derry this year, because they absolutely certainly need to at least make a final in terms of progress. And from Galway's perspective, the age profile, Paul Conroy, Comer, they're all, these are all guys in their thirties now, you know, the clock is ticking and, um, it's going to be like, no, is their season going to be defined by what happens in Healy Park on Sunday, which is the only Division One game on Sunday? It's not. But I don't think their cause would be helped if they end up in a relegation battle. And that looks like where they're heading, because I think they will find it hard to get to two points on the board. Yeah. And I think their season could go in the different trajectory if they could go there and get a victory, because it would be a big statement. And listen, let's call a spade a spade. They've definitely got the talent. Like, I think you've watched them over the last couple of years, Kieran, and said they have one of the best squads in Ireland. No doubt about it. Absolutely. like, they, that, that, And that's why you're probably, I suppose, you're probably giving them a pass. But, well, like you're giving them a pass because there's there's a valid enough excuse there that the spine of their team and a lot of their leaders are missing. And, yeah. You know, but... Having said that, you know, you still want to get, you still want, you know, as a manager on the sideline, you're still looking for a performance. You're still looking for your team. You know, you should, a team that wants to be winning all Ireland's and be competing and be there in the last four needs to have the depth of 22, 23 players that, you know, you can really rely on that are going to step up to the mark. And, you know, Rory is touching on these guys and the younger and some of them are very injury prone. So you just you can't you can't bank on that that you know oh we're gonna we're gonna be a different team come come summer, you have to see signs of of of, of progress and you have to see other lads putting their putting their hands up, and you you just want that intensity of effort and workmanship, uh, and that wasn't there against Mayo, um the Ross Common game again diff- you know conditions were tough so you can't read you know they got out with a point I didn't see that full game if I'm being quite honest. So you're 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 looking to see will they is there is there can they step up a mark in the Healy Park and not an easy place to go yeah when you're under a bit of pressure you know that's the other not an easy place to go under a bit of pressure but mm. uh, yeah it's going to be it will be a it, it, it's a hard one to call it'll be a tough, yeah. tough game that, that one could go either way yeah just, that's just, probably just, the hardest of them all isn't it go on yeah. Rory, yeah. just just one small point really Jackie just to and I know I think we love you might know him uh, Fergal Logan just to wish him well um he's unwell yeah, and uh, he's obviously stepped away from the Tyrone scene um for this sh- short or medium term we don't really know but you just wish him well yeah absolutely couldn't agree more Let's move on to Division 2 then. Four games this weekend. Donegal, Fermanagh, Cork, Cavan, Mead, Louth and Kildare, Armagh. I think we probably knew all along Donegal were going to be the team, Rory, that were setting the pace, you know. And surprise, surprise, Jimmy McGuinness is coming back and doing brilliant things with this Donegal team. I think what's most impressive so far from what we've seen is week one against Cork, very flashy attack. They go out, they score 120, putting up a big score. Then last week, you're watching them with a real gritty defence, totally different. I think he's showing us that they can mix it both ways. I think Jim McGuinness is trying to reinvent it once more, which is always fascinating to watch. And they look like a rejuvenated camp, which I think is always dangerous from a Donegal perspective when they're spirited, when their spirits are high, when there's a sense of unity, a purpose, and when there's complete and utter unification around their targets and their goals, you can be sure... It, that won't, that will be the case. There won't be any outside noise, outside distractions with McGuinness, where, where Jim McGuinness is concerned. He will, all his teams will always be in superb nick because that's just a non-negotiable in terms of physical conditioning. The thing that I was most curious about in relation to Donegal though was I think sometimes the Donegal team that he managed to win all Ireland's back or back, certainly got to two All-Ireland finals and won one in 12-14. They were class-like. They were quality players. Like, I mean, Carl Lacey, you know, obviously Michael Murphy, brilliant midfielder in Neil Gallagher, Rory Kavanagh, you know, you had Colin McFadden, Frank McGlynn, the McGee brothers, Papa and Gold. Like, this was a brilliant side. And I think sometimes that gets forgotten in how he managed to start re- reverse their fortunes and turn the entire county around. I didn't actually think the same raw materials were there this time. But it just goes to show, it just goes to show that if you do have a manager who is as organized, who is as, I suppose, he's got the backing, I would presume, of the whole county. Everyone's going to row in behind him. There's, there will be no division. There'll be complete commitment. There won't be any messing. 
Um, his coaching will be top class. He's obviously learned an awful lot in the other spheres that he's gone into since, whether it was in America, China, at Celtic with soccer. Bring little touches of that to his game plan. I'd say it's a brilliant place to be, a fantastic environment at the minute to train in. I'd say lads are bouncing in there every night. And um, yeah, like, like Donny Gahal could follow Dublin and potentially, who knows, they, you know, maybe winning all Ireland's from Division 2 is the way to go from now on. Rory, I don't I think that would surprise joking. anyone, Kieran. No, like, and I, like what Rory said there, Jackie, I, I kind of disagree a small bit about that they had class players when he took over the last time because, you know, I would have played against a lot of them even, you know, the years before that and some of them were average enough. I think he got the absolute best out of that group. I really right. do. I think okay. he, I think he they improved so much. A lot of them improved. They had it. He had a Carl I he suppose. Carl was probably the exception. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he had a couple of top class players, yeah. but they improved so much. He really, they he got everything out of them. Everything mm-hmm. out of them. And I and I've always felt that okay, yeah. even going back to Declan Bonners, going back two three years, and you were looking at the quality of player that Donegal have. I think they've always have have had good quality players, and they've always had a bit of depth. I don't think we, in the last five or six years, you could never look at a Donegal team on paper and say that's a weak team. I think they've that that quality has always been there. So even and I mean that it's transitioned. If you know what I mean, it's a it's a new team from the Jim McGuinness era, but they brought in quality players for the Declan Bonner era, all that sort of stuff. So I think he's gone into a scenario where he's again he will he's going to improve these guys by. 20, 30, 40 percent. And you can see, you know, you can see the traits in the early games. Uh, yes, he's definitely Jackie, you're 100 percent right. It's similar to Derry. They're trying to find different ways to play the game. And one of them is going to be that really high aggressive press. But you can see it's not just aggressive, it's frantic. And it's it's like the whole model is really like it's a very high energy game to play, a very, very difficult game to play. And I'd say if you're not willing to play it, you're out. You know what I mean? And he has everybody bought into that process. And the the I think one thing that stuck out for me is the intensity in the tackle over the first two games. Like they're relentless. And when they get that opportunity, when the pin guys in, they get that second or third man in, they're relentless, their physicality. You know, going going back Kerry being, you know, standing off a bit the polar opposite and I think that's one of the things that you know he brings three or four facets to the game that are that are ultimate buy-ins that you have to buy into to be part of this setup and this is the way we're going to play it so I'm not I don't think anyone's surprised we knew they'd be extremely well conditioned we knew they'd be extremely well organised he has full buy-in he has all the players back he has quality players and they're definitely they have probably have an opportunity in Division 2 to be able to work on different stuff and not yeah. Not and really still hold a hand in a huge way, you know what yeah. I mean? Like Cavan yeah. will be very happy with the forms against them the last day, but like they're gonna, I in my view, they're they're coming back up and they'll be in that division two final end off, you know. Now, if Fairman at the weekend and you gotta credit Fermana have been incredibly, you know, the heart that they've showed in the two games and everybody writing them off, so they deserve massive credit. But Donny Gall just might be a step too far from them. Yeah, I think that's fair enough from the top end of the table. I think some of the other bigger stories about what's happening around them and maybe towards the other side, look at Kildare, for instance, Kieran, and you just, I suppose when you hear things coming out, like County Board Chairman Mick Gorman speaking so openly and, and publicly at County Board meetings and that kind of thing leaks immediately that, you know, the performances just haven't been good enough. I think it adds to the pressurised situation that Glen Ryan is already under. They're away from home. They've got no new bridge. They've had a very difficult start suddenly they're under savage pressure and some of that is outside of his control. Some of it isn't, you know, but I, there's no doubt about it. Kildare, to me, seemed like the team under the most pressure in Division 2. Absolutely. And they've, I think, Armagh coming to town, I think, at the yeah. weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's another tough... In, 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 in Armagh's in away. In Armagh's, <laughs> in Armagh's, <laughs> Armagh's only away fixture of their first four happens to be against Kildare in Carlo. So they're not actually even away from... <laughs> You still haven't got over that, Seth. Sorry, you know. Like, you know. 
<laughs> just to point out, I think the Dubs' first three games are home as well out of four, just to aggravate you. Little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's grand as well because the stadium you're playing in is well paid for, isn't it? You, 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 don't, have, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about any payback there. I sure. It's yeah. turning a profit now. Shall we send it down down low? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Jackie. Getting back to your point, uh, you know, Kildare. If I'm a Kildare footballer. And I'm sitting at home and I reading what a Kildare chairman has said. I'd be very pissed off, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, mm. because you know, it's quite evident. Listen, the, the, it, you know, last year they didn't really perform well. They won performance against Ross Common, ran Mon Mon and close. But there's definitely been there was definitely maybe irks of 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 difficulties in the background, you know, rumors of difficulties in the background last year. Um so they're not in a good place. So and, and you can question, you could probably spend an hour talking about Kildare and why they're not in a good place when you look at the underage success they've had and the school success they've had and and is there a disconnect when they come out of under 20 to senior. But the bottom line is, we're talking about this weekend, they've lost two, they could lose a third and then their 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 uh, Sam uh, Maguire hopes are, are, are in tatters unless they perform in a provincial championship and stuff like that. But I do think there's absolutely no need for you know, the chairman or delegates in the middle of the season to be commenting on the county team. You know, generally that, if, if that happens on county board floors, that's done in the off season. Convention, and, yeah. You know, if you're a player or you're a part of the management, you know, you know, the players themselves, let's remember volunteers are amateurs, they're young lads, and they're trying to perform in huge pressure environments. And and when you're losing, you, you have a lot of noise around you, whether that's in your club, whether it's on whether it's in the work environment or it's in the dressing room when you actually need people to put an arm around your shoulder and you really need to come together now there could be we're not privy to everything that's going on but i felt there was absolutely no need for for those comments to be made about management or players you know it's just not appropriate it's 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 it's, somebody, it's not helpful somebody, either really it's not going to help in, the situation no it's somebody in a boardroom flexing them flexing their muscles saying you know i'm the boss it's a lot of rubbish you know, so like, they go into this game now at the weekend, probably under more pressure. And and I've been there, I suppose. I've been in Dublin dressing rooms. We've been, I've been involved with managers that have been under pressure, whether, and and when you're in those scenarios, there's nothing perfect. The, you know, the players have plenty of issues. The management have plenty of issues. You know, there's, it's, it, it can be, a, it can, it's not a nice environment to be in. And it does bring pressure, no doubt about it, on the players. But when you go out to play, you want to look around and, and everybody that's in that dressing room, everyone's in your county, you want them on side with you because you're going out to try and turn a corner to try and find something, develop a bit of confidence, get a bit of momentum. You're trying to change things uh, and that doesn't help. So I think it's just put Kildare under more strain than is necessary. And I don't in, I, I, I don't fancy him to beat Armagh. I think Armagh coming down again, similar to Donegal, I think... Division two is probably suiting Keir McGinney to a certain degree. It's taken them out of the limelight. You know, nobody's talking about them. No one's talking about their structures, their game plan, how defensive they are, how offensive they are. We're and talking they, about their fixtures. Yeah, they're just happy going. <laughs> they're just happy going under the radar. So, yeah, I, I think it's a difficult one for Kildare, but I, I thought there's absolutely no need to add the added pressure. It, it was it was yeah. an own goal in my view. Yeah, mm, yeah, understandable. Okay, speaking of controversy Rory I know you're not happy that the Cork Cavan game is on at the same time as the rugby on the weekend yeah. challenging for people trying to watch games yeah, you weren't well, happy no uh, well I'd look as we look correctly pointed out is it's it's the URC it's clashing with as opposed exactly. to Ireland Wales so thank I know. goodness I laughed and I said wait till he yeah. realises it's the you URC know, yeah, as, as I said people. to Jackie the, the normal 300 people will be there it's okay uh, supporting Cork <laughs> that's it like ah uh, look I <laughs> It's four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, an odd time though, is it? I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading. Maybe I'm getting too paranoid about fixture making. <laughs> ah, Rory, it's your, it's your for God's yeah. sake. Come on. Not like, yeah, you know. it's, yeah. It's, it's not it's, like the nation's going to stop for that rugby match. But it's must, it's a must win game. It's as simple as that. Yeah. It's a must, it's like Cork have to win. They're going up to Brewster Park the following week, and we've seen how good Fermanagh are. And I apologize to all the Fermanagh fans and supporters out there. I was the one that said they'd be way out of their depth and would be ultimately relegated. You know, that's a, that's definitely going to come back as egg on face. But I think from a Cork perspective, this weekend, 
Cavan at home. It's your first home game in the league. I just have to win. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I think, I think you know, look, we've been talking long enough about the development that's going on in Cork, but now is the time for them to make something happen for themselves, Kieran, because if they don't, they're going to start running out of road here very quickly. Yeah, and how long are we saying that, Jackie? You know, mm. and I think we, in the very first podcast of the year, we're kind of, we, we, we were talking Cork up that, you know, they looked coming out of last year that there was they were beginning to develop momentum and there was uh, quality of players, particularly maybe up front, a few good forwards, and 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 could we see an enhanced improvement in this year? And listen, they got unlucky, you know, to draw Donegal in that first game. Like no matter who was going up to Donegal that that yeah. weekend was was in for probably a bit of a trimming. Like let's be, it was going to be very very difficult first real game under McGuinness. There was uh, there was always going to be them. So you know, okay, the manner of the defeat, you would have liked to perform a bit better. Uh, and then, you know, competed well against Loud, but, you know, they've got a very conceded well... Conceded two, conceded two. two atrocious goals, goals now. Yeah, atrocious. Yeah. But they've got now Cavan coming to town and, you know, they're coming full of confidence. Mm. You know, um, and... Uh, he's Renegade, done a brilliant Renegade, job. He's done a fantastic he's doing, job. He's doing a great job. And again, they're probably slightly ahead of everybody. They're very well conditioned. We're very organised and structured against Donegal. You know, they've got a good, strong defensive system in, in place. You know, uh, they turned Kildare away, turned over Kildare away on day one. So it's going to be, it's as Rory said, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult home game because, you know, then they have to go on the road to Fermanagh. So yeah. I, I'm sorry, guys, but I think Cavan probably are just... Yeah, oh, but I, well, I don't. I don't think you need to make. I don't think you need to make any apologies for it, Willow. I would actually go along with you. I actually... We believe that I think Cavan are it's certainly at the moment and certainly in the trajectory of their development. Um brand new manager. He's put together an incredible backroom team. I don't know if you've had a look at some of the names in there, like some really high class no, no, they're not players and they don't kick the ball over the bar for you. But for a guy to transition from playing only last year into the management role on the back of Mickey Graham, who was a hugely successful Cavan manager, won an Ulster title, etc. I think he's done a really good job to make that a very smooth transition. He's a young man. He's going to be ambitious. They have... Has Garrod McKernan stepped away for a year? That didn't really seem to knock any kind of stuff in out of them. Um, they, like, they have a couple of really, really good forwards, the likes of uh, Paddy Lynch and uh, one or two more. I, I, I think Carvin will win this game and the pressure will only heap further on the likes of Cork and Kildare. And me. Yeah. The Ulster <laughs> surge at the top of Division 2 is going to continue. Armagh, Donegal, mm. Cavan. You know, yeah. they're the top four at the moment. And then you want down in Antrim or top of Division 3. You know, yeah. so they're all Ulster football is, is off to a good start this year. Mm. Last brief word then on the other game Mead Loud. Mead took an awful hiding off Armagh. When you look at, I don't know, it's very hard to judge even with them. Winning the Telton Cup, such a big boost last season Kieran, and you say oh great they're going in the right direction watch them play against our man just thought don't know they didn't look like they had an awful lot done either and I think they're going to find themselves in a very difficult spot if they don't start winning too because they're under pressure towards the other end of the table too yeah they're under under massive pressure a point on the board uh have they a point on the board yeah they do they drew drew from they drew they drew yeah, the they, yeah so they're yeah. on the board and you know Jerry Brennan's done a reasonably good job allowed so far you know they they put it up to our man day one uh, and then turned over Cork on day two. Uh, okay, he lacks probably a bit of depth. You know, I think one of the things Jay probably would hope me say is that you know it's it's trying to find from you know players fifteen to twenty twenty one develop that bit of depth in their panel. They've continued on the momentum you know that they had under Hart and and Devlin, and that's a local derby. You know, going to Mead. So, like from Mead's perspective, absolutely brilliant win in the Talton Cup, but. You know, it is, a, it is, a, it's, it's, it drops a level when you're playing at that level. And to come out of Division Two, you know, you need to be, you're always going to have, you have to be turning over maybe one of the, you know, top teams in the country, really. You know what I mean? You have to get one or two big wings, big wings under your belt. And they just look like they're off that at the moment. They don't just don't look like they're stepping up to the next level. So, yeah, they've got to get a win. They've got to get a win. Uh, because now they obviously have the comfort of the, Sam McGuire position and they would get out of jail yeah. card, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. You wonder is that gonna happen? And that could be guys? playing into it as well, that maybe he's just, you know, but they definitely you want to stay in this division, even if yeah. you're not saying, okay, we want to get promoted. Like oh, yeah. that, they, that's that's the fear now. Hold your own. Absolutely. Yeah. Have two or three wins under your belt coming into a lens 
it's a it's another must win game, you know. So like I think in, in division two is they're division all like two that. is gonna get better as in the next couple of weeks, really is, you know. Uh, yeah. because that's where the real pressure is mounting on, on, on counties. Like there's mm. you know, we spoke about division one and certain teams will push on and try to win the league, but I think ultimately managers will be just happy to maintain their position in it. Uh, and get a few points, and they're they're more looking at the performance of their team on a week on week on basis. But if if you're in Division Two and you start winning three four games in a row, your season is getting away from you very quickly. Mm. Mm. Week three, this is where it all starts to boil in the melting pot, lads. We're going to have to leave it there. Enjoy the weekend wherever you're going. Where are you off to this weekend, Kieran? You going to any of the matches? I am going to the studios of RT for the day on Sunday, Jackie, to watch about five games. So I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that. Enjoy Flat every minute. Flat to the mat. Rory, are you going to the park? No, not this week. And it's not being shown anywhere either, which is a pity. There's a good few games on TV. So no, I won't get down there. Um, so Couch we'll have, for the weekend. Enjoy we'll, have the, that. We'll, we'll have the company of a uh, local radio or somebody, I'm sure somebody will keep us up to date or Scorpio and fairness to them. So. Good. Well, after giving up your Valentine's, you can go back and enjoy it all again. <laughs> Lads, thanks a million. <laughs> Myself and Rory will be back on Monday to review it all. Kieran, thanks a million for being with us and have a great weekend. Oh, there's the whistle, it's over.